I'm Chela Kampande. I'm a PhD candidate at the South African Tuberculosis Vaccine Initiative at the University of Cape Town. My PhD primarily focuses on understanding classical T cell immunity in, indiv in individuals that are latently MTB infected. And today I'm going to present um, some of the results from a paper we recently published in Frontiers Immunology, focusing on understanding microbacterium tuberculosis antigen specific stem cell memory T cells. Um, so to just give you a background about TB for people who are not aware of it. So TB is a highly infectious airborne disease. It's the leading cause of death due to infectious diseases globally, and it's actually the ninth leading cause of death from a disease in the world. So in 2017, approximately 1.3 million individuals died due to the disease. Fortunately, there is a vaccine against TB, BCG, which was developed in 1921 from an attenuated mycobacterium bovis strain. This vaccine is, is routinely administered in areas where TB is highly endemic and prevalent, as indicated in the blue shaded areas. In 2017, there were approximately 10 million new TB cases, of which 90% were in individuals that are over the age of 15, highlighting the need of a TB vaccine that is efficacious in adults. Um, so if you know about classical immunity and um, vaccine-induced immunity um, to TB against or to BCG, we know that CD4 T cells are essential for MTB control. And it's proposed that the lack of effic BCG efficacy in adults could be due, due to waning and insufficient maintenance of, of BCG or natural MTB T cell immunity. So the main question is, which memory T cells should we induce by vaccination against TB? And in order to, under, to determine this, we actually need a better understanding of MTB memory T cell repertoire. So briefly, um, the whole point of vaccines it, is to induce either T cell or B cell adaptive immunity. And when naive T cells are exposed to antigen, they differentiate into different memory phenotypes. So they can either differentiate into stem cell memory cells, central memory, and effector memory, terminally differentiated effector cells. And as cells become more differentiated, they gain in capacity to kill other cells, so cytotoxic capacity, or in the ability to produce effector functions. Additionally, as they become more differentiated, they have a higher reliance on antigen for them to actually perform their function. Um, so within the last 10 years, there was a relatively newly described memory phenotype known as stem cell memory cells, which I'll just say TACM for short because it's quite a mouthful. So these memory phenotype look like naive in that they express CD45RA, CCR7, and CD62L. However, they do express memory-associated markers such as CXCR3 and CD95. As, and as you can see, these markers are generally upregulated as cells become antigen-exposed. So stem cell memory T cells have superior self-renewing capacity, longevity, and proliferative potential compared to central memory factor memory phenotypes. However, majority of the knowledge of TSM function has been derived primarily from virus or parasitic tumor-specific CDA TSEMs where studies have shown that TSEMs are essential for re-establishing antigen-specific T cells after depletion in cancer patients, and they are a potential target for maintaining long-lasting vaccine-induced T cell immunity. And like I said, majority is based on understanding CD8-positive TSEMs. So what about CD4-positive TSEM cells? So little is known about CD4-positive TSEM function in response to bacterial infection. Us and other people have actually observed cytokine expressing or MSC class 2 tetramer positive microbacteria specific CD4 T cells that have a naive phenotype. How, um, unfortunately, during these early studies, people predominantly thought these were naive T cells and they're not really antigen specific, so there wasn't a lot of focus on this memory phenotype. But a study in mice showed that um, when you vaccinate um, the mice with BCG, then isolate these naive like CD4 T cells and transfer them to naive um, mice that don't have T cells. They actually induce, they actually play a role in controlling MTB infection, where you have a higher proportion of effector phenotypes that produce more gamma expression, which has been shown to be essential for MTB control. And there is almost a log difference in MTB control when you transfer these naive like CD4 T cells, highlighting that there is an importance of MTB-specific or mycobacteria-specific naive-like T cells. 
So overall, the aim of the study was to determine if natural MTB infection induces antigen-specific CD4 positive TSEM, and if they do, characterize their functional ontology. So like I said, the first question is, do, does natural MTB infection induce CD4 positive TSEMs, and at what point of infection is it induced? And to determine this, we studied the cohort of individuals that were MTB uninfected. Uninfected de determined by quaniferon and TSD assay. And during the follow up, they actually got MTB infected and converted their quaniferon and their TSD. We used tetramer positive, um, we used MEC class 2 tetramers to identify antigen specific T cells, which were tetramer positive, and we used the memory markers CCR7, CD45 array and CD25 to characterize the different memory phenotypes. So for simplicity and numbers, we primarily use CCR7, CD45 array, and CD27 to identify naive um, like TSEM cells. So what we observed is when these individuals were MTB uninfected, which is at baseline, there were actually no detectable memory phenotypes. And upon infection, there was an induction of central memory and effector memory phenotypes, as well, as well as an induction of stem cell memory cells that were observed at low frequencies but were maintained throughout infection, showing that natural MTB infection does induce MTB-specific TSEMs. The next thing we want to know is actually what is the gene expression profile of these MTB-specific TSEMs. And to determine this, we stained PBMCs with tetramers and the memory uh, markers, then we sorted them using the facts area where we sorted both bulk in that non-specific CD4 T cell memory subsets and tetramer positive CD4 T cell memory subsets, 30 of each cell subset using the markers highlighted CCR7, CD45 RA, and CD27. After we sorted the cells, then we measured gene expression using microfluidic QRT-PCR. So we measured over 90 genes, and when we actually compare the different memory phenotypes, we were able to differentiate the different memory phenotypes in that naive um, central memory effectors and stem cell memory phenotypes using 22 genes. So these genes encompassed expression, I mean, expression of effector function, cytoxic molecules, homing capacity, and also um, other molecules that are used, that are essential for maintaining the overall memory phenotype. And as you can see, naive T cells, which are shown in green, cluster separately. And there's a bit of overlap between expression of gene, gene expression between central memory and stem cell memory cells, and relatively effector cells also cluster by themselves. But what was really interesting for us and reassuring is that even though we didn't use CD95 to identify the stem cell memory cells shown here in the blue triangles, the stem cell, MTB specific stem cell memory cells actually clustered with bulk TSEMs, showing that these MTB specific TSEMs are definitely no, na not naive and they have a similar gene expression profile to bulk TSEMs. So, like I said, um, the 22 genes that were used to um, cluster the different memory phenotypes were predominantly chemokine receptors, cytoxic molecules, and other effector functions. We actually wanted to know whether these MTB specific TSEMs actually express the chemokine receptors. So we measured using flow cytometry, um, expression of CCR6, CXCR3, CCR4, and CCR5. And you can see here, this is the actual, the red dots represent total tetramer-positive CD4 T cells. And majority of the tetramer-positive T cells express both CCR6 and CXCR3, have very little expression of CCR4, and some express CCR5. So what we did is we actually ex compared the expression levels of the deep different chemokine receptors between naive T cells shown in green, um, bulk stem cell memory cells shown in dark blue, and MTB-specific TSEMs shown in light blue. And you can see here, akin to their naive nature and not being antigen exposed, they express very low frequencies. Naive T cells express very low frequencies of any of the chemokine receptors. And what was very nice to see because at a total tetramer-positive population, majority of the cells express CXCR3, and the MTB-specific TSEMs also expressed higher levels, high levels of CXCR3, and the level of CXCR3 expression was actually much higher than bulk TSEMs. And we saw similar expression patterns when you looked at CCR6 and CCR5. So CCR4 is a chemokine receptor associated with a TH2 uh, memory phenotype. 
And in most literature, that um, people individuals have shown that MTB specific T cells actually express very little TH2 associated cytokines. And what's very interesting to see here and very reassuring is that despite being an early differentiated phenotype, this, these MTB specific TSEMs have a more MTB specific chemical receptor expression profile and also very low expression of CCR4 compared to bulk TSEMs. And when we looked at the core expression of the different chemokine receptors, we can see that overall the MTB specific TSEMs have a more heterogeneous expression profile characterized by different proportions of CXCR3, CCR6, CCR5 co-expressing profiles. Even though we didn't use CD95 as the mark of TSEMs, we can see at least 75% of these individuals highlighted by this red arc express high levels of CD95 and actually a very low proportion of the MTB specific TSEMs express no expression of the chemokine receptors of CD95, suggesting that these could truly be naive um, T cells. So the next thing we wanted to know is whether MTB-specific TSEMs express cytotoxic molecules. And in order to do this, we measured expression of granzyme A, granzyme B, granulysin, granzyme K, and porphyrin. And this is in non-stimulated samples, and that's the beauty of using tetramers, is that you actually don't need to rely on antigen exposure to measure expression of different markers and you won't have an in vitro effect of expression. And what we observed is that the MTB-specific TSEM shown in light blue expressed relatively but detectable levels of granzyme A and granzyme K, but very little expression of granulysin and perforin. And the cytotoxic expression of granzyme A and granzyme K was significantly higher compared to bulk TSEMs and naive T cells, showing that MTB-specific TSEMs have superior cytotoxic potential than bulk TSEMs. And as cells become more differentiated, they tend to express more cytotoxic molecules, suggesting that these MTB-specific TSEMs are highly differentiated um, antigen-specific TSEMs. So um, a lot of studies predominantly in looking at CDA T cells has shown that MTB, MTB um, TSEMs express high levels of L2. So we wanted to see if MTB-specific TSEMs do express a similar expression profile. In order to determine this, we measured expression of antigen 85 b ESAT6, expression of cytokine in response to stimulation with antigen 85 b ESAT6, CFP10, and BCG. So the peptide pools are NG85, B, S6, and CFP10, and BCG is a whole cell. So it's a whole bacteria with different antigens on the surface and inside of the bacteria. So what we observed when you looked at expression of R2 is that um, the mycobacteria-specific TSEMs in response to stimulation with antigen 85 B significantly induce expression of R2. But in response to stimulation of ESA6 and CFP10, there wasn't a significant induction of outer expression. And like I said, BCG is a whole cell and encompassing a whole lot of antigens. We did see a significant induction of outer expression. Then when we looked at interferon gamma, even though in response to antigen 85B stimulation, we did see expression of out 2 we actually didn't ex see expression of interferon gamma. However, we did see expression of interferon gamma in response to CFP10 stimulation and BCG. So this shows that MTB-specific TSEMs do produce TH1 cytokines, even though I've only showed auto and interferon gamma. I saw a similar profile of um, TNF expression as interferon gamma in response to different antigen stimulations. And also what's interesting is that the cytokine expression is different depending on which MTB antigens um, the cells are uh, exposed to. So finally, um, one of the key features of stem cell memory T cells is uh, maintaining long-term um, pool of memory T cells and actually having very high proliferative capacity in the absence of antigen. So to determine if TSEMs in the context of microbacteria antigens contributes to long-term proliferative potential, we measured immune responses in BCG-vaccinated infants 10 months post-vaccination. So these infants were healthy HIV-negative inf infants. And what we observed is that we used um, BCG exp expression of KI67 as a marker of proliferation, and we actually saw that 
Um, frequencies of BCG-specific stem cell memory T cells shown in um, light blue here, and central memory cells shown in pink are positively correlated with um, um, proliferative potential in BCG-specific CD4 T cells 10 months post-vaccination. And even though we see lower frequencies of BCG-specific TSEMs, the, cor the positive correlation is very similar between BCG-specific TSEMs and central memory, central memory BCG-specific cells. So finally, in conclusion, um, the data I've shown here and what we published in the, in the paper earlier this year shows that MTB-specific CD4-positive TSEMs are induced by MTB infection and sustained throughout infection. They exhibit transcriptional profiles that are very distinct from bulk naive, showing that they're actually not naive T cells. They express chemokine receptors associated with the memory TH1, TH17 phenotype. So this is expression, core expression of CCR6, CCR6 and CXCR3. Um, they express cytoxin molecules, granzyme A and granzyme K, and have a TH1 cytokine profile that is not limited to R2. And finally, we showed that even though it's an indirect measurement, that um, MTB-specific TSEMs correlate with long-term proliferative BC, uh, pro proliferation post-BCG vaccination in infants. So this was a study that involved contribution of many people. So One and Munya um, did a lot of the transcriptomic studies and they're actually involved in um, setting up the flow cytometry panel and helping with the analysis. Um, my supervisors, Elisa and Tom, gave supervision throughout the study and our head of our research group, Mark, actually um, contributed significantly to the study. And none of this could have been achieved without obviously the study participants and also the whole SADV clinical team. And I'd like to acknowledge our funders, the South African Medical Research Council and the National Research Foundation, and as well as UCT for funding my graduate studies and obviously Immunopedia for giving me the opportunity to present my work. Thank you.